Okay, here's a problem that some friends of mine asked me to solve. Find positive integer values for t and k such that the following are true. t squared minus k squared is less than 6, t plus k is greater than 4, and t is greater than k. And they have to be positive integers. So find the numbers, basically. Find a number for t and a number for k such that these three equations are all satisfied at the same time. And they have to be positive integers. All right, this type of problem is what we call a system of equations because there's more than one equation. And these are inequalities, notice. These are all greater than or less than. And this is nonlinear. See the squared up here, t squared minus k squared. So this is a system of nonlinear inequalities. And these equations could be anything. These are the equations for this particular problem. But you could imagine any equation you want here. So there's essentially an infinite variety of equations that we could have. This looks similar to a line, for example. This looks similar to a hyperbola. You can imagine basically any different types of curves interacting in a plane. And you can see that there's a tremendous variety of problems of this type that one could try to solve. So because there's such a wide variety of problems, there's not any one systematic approach that works every time. So what we have to do is look at this and see what we have. And this one I'm going to approach graphically. Sometimes you can solve these with a substitution or with some trial and error. But because I recognize this is similar to an equation for a line and this similar to a hyperbola, I, I think about graphing a line and graphing a hyperbola and think maybe I can come up with a graphical solution to this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite the problem in terms of x and y. Instead of t, I'm just going to say x, so I'll say x squared. Instead of k, I'll, I'll put a y, so I get y squared. x squared minus y squared is less than 6 x plus y is greater than 4, and x is greater than y. And this just lets me work in the xy plane with variables that I'm familiar with. And let's see, to get that right, every t has become an x, and every k has become a y. So conceptually, it's the same problem. I can just work in an xy plane now. Now let's start with the hard part here. x squared minus y squared is less than 6. This is a hyperbola. So let me elaborate on that a little bit. Um, if I take this equation, x squared minus y squared is less than 6, and I divide both sides by 6, you see what I get. I get x squared over 6 minus y squared over 6 is less than 1. And these values down here that we typically refer to as a and b for hyperbola, you can see here a squared is equal to 6, and the same thing with b, so b squared is equal to 6. So a and b, these a and b values for the hyperbola are both the square root of 6. And those values define the box that gives us the asymptotes for the hyperbola. So let me draw x and y axes like this. Okay, square root of 6 is just a little bit less than 2 and a half. So if I graph this, What this means is that I come out to about two and a half, or just a little less than two and a half, and make a box like this. And the diagonals of this box become the asymptotes for the hyperbola. And now this, you see this uh, square root of six length right here and right here, means that this line, this point right there, is going to lie right on the line y equals x. And then the line y equals negative x. Whoops. Down here. Okay. Not too bad for a freehand sketch. Okay, and then the hyperbola is horizontal. You see that the x is positive, so this major axis is horizontal here. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, here's the hyperbola. Now, let me come at that another way. If you, if you haven't studied the conic sections and you didn't follow the graphing of the hyperbola, let me show you how we can get something equivalent for this problem a slightly different way. And we're just going to look at the first quadrant here because we're told that we have to have positive integer solutions. So let me scroll down here and um, show you another way we can, we can come at that. 
Okay, uh, the equation, what was it? Let's see, x squared minus y squared is less than 6. Okay, x squared minus y squared is less than 6. We're going to graph this. All right, let's take this and subtract x squared from each side, and that leaves us with negative y squared is less than negative x squared plus 6. Multiply both sides by negative 1, and we get y squared here, and we get x squared minus 6 there. And when we multiply both sides by a negative number, the direction of the inequality switches around. So, And then square root both sides, and you get y is greater than the square root of x squared minus 6. Okay, now what does this look like? You might think it's kind of like a square root graph, but it's not. This is not a square root of x graph. This is square root of x squared, and that's going to look different. Square root of x squared sounds more like it would be a line, right? And you'll see that line in just a second. Uh, let's get some numbers here. Look at this. What if I put in, what if I put in right here for x, what if I put in square root of 6 for x? what would I get for y? Well, square root of 6 squared would just be 6 minus 6 is 0. So if x is square root of 6, y is 0. And so that's right there, just a little bit less than 2 and a half, square root of 6 right there. Okay, um, let's get another value, or uh, here, another fact about a graph of this function. What happens when x gets large? Think about that. As x gets large, okay, and I mean really large for extreme values. As x gets huge, you should see that this negative 6 becomes insignificant compared to the x squared. So as x gets large, this graph looks something like this, square root of x squared, because the x squared matters a whole lot more than this for large values of x. So the square root of x squared is just x. So as x gets large, the graph approximately equals the graph of y equals x. And that's that asymptote that we saw earlier. Like that. And then if you wanted to, you could plot some points, but it's basically going to look something like this. Okay, asymptote right there. That's part of that hyperbola we had graphed earlier. Okay, now let's go back to the other equations. Let me see what, what were the other equations we were looking at. Um, x plus y is greater than 4. Okay, let's put that one on here. I'll switch colors here. x plus y is greater than 4. Okay, just subtract x from each side. You get y is greater than negative x plus 4. So that looks like this. That's a line, the slope of negative 1, like that. And we need, whoops, I kind of missed there. Let me back up. Kind of picky here. Aiming right for the 4, that's better. Okay. So for y values to be greater than that, we need points above this line. Okay. And over here, on this graph, we need points above that line too. So it's going to be points up in this region. And then there was one more condition that we had. And what was that? In the original problem, um, x is greater than y. So let's put that on here. And let me get another color. I'll go to orange here. x is greater than y. That's the same thing as saying y is less than x. That's this line right here that we've already seen. But its values below it. y has to be less than that. So its values down here. OK, so in, with the colors here, you can see what I've got. Things above the yellow above the yellow graph, above the blue, and below this orange. So that limits us to this region right in here. To satisfy all of those conditions, our x and y values have to be points in this region. Okay, and they've got to be integer values too. And then now just from looking at the graph here, it looks like 3, 2, x equals 3, y equals 2 might be in that region. Okay, and so that looks like our answer. Um, 4, 3 maybe as well, maybe. x is 4, y is 
3 maybe, but let's try this. x equals 3, y equals 2. Let's come back to the original original statement of the problem. x equals 3, y equals 2. I'm going to uh, erase this just so I have a little room here. Okay, x equals 3, y equals 2. Let's see if this works. If I put in 3 for x and 2 for y. 3 squared minus 2 squared, is that less than 6? Let's see, 9 minus 4 is 5. That works. Okay, and let's check it here. Put in 3 for x, 2 for y. Is that greater than 4? 3 plus 2 is greater than 4? Sure is. And over here, 3 for x is 2 for y. 3 is greater than 2. So those values satisfy all three equations. So that is our point. And if we, we take this other point that we said might might work 4, comma, 3x is 4, y is 3. I don't think that will work over here. You can see if we put in a 4 squared minus 3 squared, does that work? A 16 minus 9 is 7. 7 is not less than 6. So that doesn't work. 4, comma, 3, that point is outside that shaded region on the graph. But 3, comma, 2 is our answer.